Hello and welcome. My name is Nick Johnson. I am a part of the National Partner Technology Strategist team here at Microsoft. In today's video, I want to give you a glimpse at how to get started with your first Microsoft OMS workspace. And this video is a part of a blog that I'm authoring. So if you haven't seen the blog yet, I'll post the link in the comment section to this video. And really, this is just an opportunity for you as a partner to begin to get to know Microsoft OMS if you haven't learned it yet. This certainly isn't meant to cover all of OMS and all the amazing things you can do with it. There are more links in the blog if you want to dive deeper into any particular subject that I talk about today. Before we jump in and actually build out an OMS workspace, I'd like to go in and create some resources that we can begin monitoring with that workspace right away. And in our case, it's as simple as creating some virtual machines in Microsoft Azure. If you've got virtual machines already running, that's great. You can begin to monitor those. Uh, for demo purposes, of course, I recommend that you focus on demo environments. So as you can see here in my Microsoft Azure subscription, I've got three servers up and running. So for these virtual machines, what I want to do is add one more to my collection. So I'm going to go down and click on New, Compute, Virtual Machine, and I'm actually going to choose to build it from the gallery versus the Quick Create. Doing this is going to give us a few more options that will make our demonstration environment just a little bit richer. So again, I'm just going to choose Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center. On the Virtual Machine Configuration page, you'll see this version release date field. I recommend choosing an older version release date, which is going to give you a, a build of this template that's actually slightly out of compliance in terms of Windows updates and security updates. For a demo, that's okay. What that is going to allow OMS to do is capture that information right away and begin to alert us that there's a machine that we need to update. So I'm going to choose the August build in this case, and then I'm going to go ahead and populate a virtual machine name. You'll notice that I chose the A1 size virtual machine. Because I'm not actually going to be doing anything of substance on the machine, I chose the super small size just to keep my costs low. Continuing on with the virtual machine configuration, I will go ahead and fill out all the rest of the fields and then click next. On this last page, I do recommend that you install the VM agent. However, because this is not a production environment, I'm not going to choose to install any of the security extensions. So I am intentionally leaving this machine vulnerable for the moment so that we can then demo later on what that means in terms of OMS monitoring that for us. So now you can see that DB Server 2 is provisioning and in a couple minutes we'll have that virtual machine up and running. One of the other features that I like to demonstrate when showing OMS for the first time is the ability for it to monitor the protection of my virtual machines in terms of backups. So let me click over to Azure Recovery Services. So as you can see, I have two backup vaults created. Uh, in this case, I'm using Vault 1 to protect my virtual machines that I'm using for my OMS demo. So I'll click into Vault 1 just to show you what it's protecting. Now, if you're familiar with the backup vault structure, all you have to do is click on the Protected Items tab here at the top and you'll see that both my file servers have been set up uh, for protection. And So for demo purposes, I recommend setting up your virtual machines a couple of days ahead of time. Come in, set up a recovery vault, and begin protecting a couple of your machines at, at minimum, just so you have some data to actually work with in the OMS workspace. The last thing I want to do is make a couple of modifications on my virtual machines. So let me jump over. I'm going to log into one of the database servers that I just created. And the one tweak that I want to make on this machine is actually in the Windows Update section. So I came in, went to the control panel, and when I click into Windows Update, you'll see it's set to automatically install updates. What I actually would like to do is change that setting to allow it to be my choice. So I click on Change Settings, um, and I'm just going to change the important update setting to Download, but let me choose whether to install them. Okay, so now we are back in the Azure portal, and we are ready to actually configure our workspace in OMS. Now there are a couple ways you can do this. You can either go to microsoft.com slash OMS, or since you're already in the Azure portal, you can actually do it right here. To access this, scroll down to the Operational Insight section, and you'll see the only option on the screen is to create a workspace. So click on Create a Workspace, and then we're going to create a new account. We'll give it a name, choose the free tier for our demo, and I'll leave it in the East US location. So then I'll just click Create Workspace, and you will see the status bar at the bottom of the screen telling me that it was creating a new workspace. As soon as that's done, I can click on the Manage button, and this will open up another tab in my browser, and it will actually go and log me into my OMS workspace. 
And so you can see it was that easy. It, it quite literally took about 15 seconds to create that OMS workspace. And now all we have to do is connect it back to anything that we want to monitor. And the way we do that is with this big blue tile right in the middle of the screen, just click on the Get Started link. And to get started, you walk through three steps. The first is you add the solutions. Now the solutions are the different pieces that you want OMS to pay attention to. You can either just select the defaults for now, or if you want to know more, or if you want to remove them, you can visit the gallery. Uh, you can either do that now or any time later on. So for a first demo, I recommend just going with the defaults. I'm going to click Add Those Solutions, and you can see now it installed seven solutions in my workspace. We're a third of the way done. Now I'm going to connect a data source. So when I click on Connect to Data Source, this is actually now telling it which virtual machines would I like to monitor. And you can see there's three options for doing that. One is to attach directly to individual computers. The second way that you can do this is through System Center Operations Manager. If you've got SCOM installed, you can go ahead and set that up. I don't have that in this demo, um, but if you already have got it, that's a great way to do it. Or you can connect to an Azure storage account. So those are the three options you can do from right here within the browser. I'm actually going to go ahead and do the first one, which is attached to a computer directly. Um, and in this case, I'm going to connect to a computer that I've got running over on AWS. So here I am logged into my Windows Server 2012 R2 machine running over on AWS. And I've downloaded the agent, and I'm just going to click on it to run. Installing the agent is relatively easy. Uh, it's just a matter of following the prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And when I get to this screen, I'm actually going to tell it in my case, I want to connect directly to Azure Operational Insights. Now this information, the workspace ID and the workspace key, are actually available on that Operational Insights screen. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy paste those in here. And then I'll click Next. I will select the option to use Microsoft Update when I check for updates. Click Next. And then go ahead and install. Once that install is complete, I just click Finish. And then I will jump back over to my OMS workspace. In the OMS workspace, I'll just refresh, and you'll see now that it actually does recognize that there is a connected data source. If I click on that, it's telling me that there is one server connected, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. The last piece of setting it up is to add the logs. Now there's a lot of advanced configuration you can do here, but again, for a simple demonstration, I just recommend perhaps monitoring the application system log and the system event log. To do that is really easy. You just type the name of the log you want to follow into the search box. Click the plus sign to add it. So let's go ahead and add the application event log. And I will also add the system event log. And now we are monitoring those two event logs. You can see there are numerous other options. That's more of an advanced setup that you can dive into if you, if you so choose. Once you've added the logs, click save at the bottom of the screen. And now I'm going to click back to the home screen, which is this little icon up in the left-hand corner. And now you'll see that OMS is starting to go out and gather the information. It isn't instantaneous the first time you do it, so give it a few minutes. It, you may even want to let it run overnight just to go allow it to go out and do a full scan of everything that's happening. You'll also see that we have configured Azure Backup. Uh, if you remember earlier in the video, I showed you that I was using a vault to protect some of the virtual machines running on Azure. I'd like to monitor that vault right from within OMS, so I'm going to click on that to set up that configuration. And you can see by default, it went out, grabbed my information from the Azure subscription. It sees that I had Vault 1. All I have to do is click Save. The last piece of configuring this is to begin monitoring the virtual machines that I have set up in Azure. Now, I could do the same thing I did with the first one and individually connect them. But if I want to do it a little bit faster, I can go back over to the Azure portal and add them quite quickly. Let me show you how to do that. Back in the Azure portal, I see my OMS workspace that I set up. I'm going to go ahead and click into it. The first thing I see is the Quick Start screen. I'm going to choose Azure Virtual Machines. And OMS went out and it saw that there are a couple virtual machines that are not enabled yet to be monitored. Um, and I can actually just go ahead and now click on those. And down at the bottom, select the Enable Op Insights. And it'll ask me if I want to install the agent on that server. I simply click Yes and I will repeat the process for Server 2. After a few minutes, you'll see that Operational Insights is enabled and the status is active for both virtual machines. Now I'll click back over to my OMS workspace. And once I'm in the OMS workspace, you can see now that the malware assessment is showing that there are three servers with inadequate protection because I don't have anything installed on those. That's not a good thing in normally, but it's a good demo. 
We also see that the system update assessment has started to understand that there are updates that need to be applied to my various machines. I'm going to go ahead and just click into that. And here you can see that it's telling me that DB Server 1 is missing several security updates. So I could go and, and take action on any of those machines. So this brings us to the end of setting up a very simple but powerful uh, look at OMS. If you want to go a little bit further, you could configure things like Azure Site Recovery or automation if you wanted to actually insert some scripts into the process. In the blog that accompanies this video, I have included some additional resources specifically on automation if you want to learn how to extend that feature. That's a really great opportunity for partners uh, to build out custom resources that will help their customers manage their environments. Thanks for following with us today, and good luck setting up your very first Microsoft Operations Management Suite workspace.